83,525. That's how many people currently live in Clearwater County. And it's also the number of people that have never attended a county fair in the county. And that's because there's never been a county fairgrounds. But that's going to change if some representatives on the county board have anything to do with it. Representatives from the village of Shorewood and the cities of Fairchild and Johnson's Creek have been trying to convince other county board members to secure land somewhere in the county for a permanent fair venue. And Johnson's Creek's most prominent citizen and new county board representative, Chu Vang, has even offered free land in Johnson's Creek near Vang Lake. He figures one of the most important parks in the county will put his community on the map. Representatives from Ashland, Belmont, and Van Buren seem less interested, raising issues about the cost of building permanent structures, the cost of their ongoing maintenance, and concerns about the site not being very centrally located. However, when the project comes to a vote, representatives from the rural towns band together to vote in favor of the project. They understand what a boon it could be to their communities to have a venue to celebrate the agricultural heritage of the region. So in this episode, we're going to break ground on this new fairground. We use a mixture of assets from the Park Life and Concerts DLCs, as well as custom workshop assets to create a county park that's completely unique and completely functional. And by the end, we'll have one of the most interesting parks in the county. And if you're happy to be back in Clearwater County, hit the like button. And if it feels weird to be back, like heading back to your hometown after being gone for a couple of years, hit the like button for that too, and let me know how you feel down in the comments. Or leave your favorite emoji for the sake of engagement. And without any further ado, let's jump right in. Hello and welcome back to Clearwater County. It feels good to be back here. It's been a minute, but we've got a really interesting project for today. We're gonna to be building a massive fairground and county park in this area right here. So let's kick things off by laying things out. And I want this to feel relatively rural, so I think that we'll lay out some rural roads going along the side here that'll provide vehicular access to the entire park. But the very first thing that we need to do is get rid of this planning road because plans have indeed changed. Now I wanna pick the road that we're gonna use, and I think we'll go with one of our rural paved roads. This will give us the feel that I think we're looking for in this area. And then we're going to use our create parallel mode extensively through here. Now to begin, I'm just going to have a parallel road that goes all the way along here. And I'll back this out about 40 meters. I want it to be away from the highway a reasonable amount. But at the same time, this is a really narrow strip of land. So I don't want to get too close to the water. And it looks like right here, we're elevated, we'll fix that. Oh, it feels good to have anarchy. <laughs> and then we're going to come into this area, but I want to make sure that we're in the most logical location. So looking at this, it looks like we've got a bus stop right there. We wouldn't want to come in right there. I think we'll probably come in right about here. So we'll connect this road up back here. Then we'll have a pedestrian entrance right here and another one right here to get into the park itself. So let's use our create connection mode for this. And that looks just about perfect to me. Now I wanna create a district right here because right now we've got a couple of districts that don't necessarily make sense. I've gotta be careful here because we use the park district to name the lake, so I don't wanna inadvertently go over the top of that. And we'll name that Clearwater County Fairgrounds right off the bat. Now I'm not 100% sure just how far back we'll go yet. We're gonna let the build decide where it goes. At the front end, we'll have some of our amusement park rides and our concession stands. Then we'll have our 4-H area with some of our agricultural buildings. And then we'll have our concert venue where you might go and see bands. And then to the left of that, we're gonna have some campgrounds. And this is really inspired by a place that I used to go to as a kid a lot, where you could camp at the, at the county fairground if you wanted, or you could just walk in there from a neighborhood. And I happened to live very close to it when I was growing up and I just loved it. Now I'm going to make one more connection over here. And this is really because I think we need to have two ways in and out of here. For the purposes of safety. I'll just create a nice sweeping curve around there. And you know what? I don't know that I necessarily respected the topography through there. <laughs> we might, uh, uh, we're going to call them all again. And that was really extra, but to me, this looks like an area where you might have some sort of stormwater facility. So I'm going to preserve the ability to do that if we want to. So now I want to add an entryway in here. So we're going to add in a pedestrian entry point. 
and I'm gonna use a pedestrian road for this. And I think I'm gonna bring that in over here. The reason I like this is we have our bus stop right here. So this will shift our bus stop over just a little bit. It lines it up with this pedestrian facility and gives us a nice connection right into the downtown area. That said, I want this facility to be more in line with this road. So what I think we'll do is something like that. Now, the reason why I'm using these pedestrian roads, like I mentioned, is we'll be able to place buildings off from here. And we're gonna be using a lot of assets that are not necessarily park life assets, and they are going to need a proper road. And if we don't give that, we will have issues with the buildings the entire time. So this to me is a good solution for that. I'm gonna turn this so that this road starts paralleling this because I think it'll make it easier to lay things out down the line. Oh my goodness. I've, 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 I'm not gonna lie, I've missed this power. <laughs> I feel very powerful right now. <laughs> All right, and now that we have that, I want to actually make this a proper fairground, so we need to add an entryway in here. And we're gonna be using the amusement park assets extensively through here, and we haven't unlocked any of them, so it's gonna be very important that we get them in this area. So I'm gonna place this, and this will unlock a whole bunch of assets that we can use for our fairgrounds. And then I'm just gonna slide this over into the front of this. Now I'm gonna be out front with you. Initially, I was thinking of trying to make this asset look nice, but eventually I think that we're just going to remove it in favor of an invisible park entrance. So we'll just skip past this. This is Editor Phil saving you some time. And now with our layout in place, let's move on to building our amusement park. So for the next little while on the build, I want you to basically ignore that we're right next to a neighborhood because we're gonna make this place feel really tucked away. But we're gonna do that after we make this place kind of loud and obnoxious first. So let's go ahead and add some of our amusement park assets through here. So I only wanna use assets that feel like they could be at a fair and honestly, Things like this amusement park plaza don't really do it for me, but things like the cafe absolutely do, so long as we remove that decal at the bottom that looks absolutely obnoxious. <laughs> so we will get rid of that in just a moment. And then I decided to grab all of the assets and just place them for the time being. We've got some restrooms, we've got some game booths, and we've also got the carousel. And I think that all of those are totally appropriate here but I wanna add these on normal paths. So I think that we'll start off by doing something like this. We've added our amusement park cafe that's gonna be really close to the entry point. In fact, let's put that right over here, right by the restroom. And then for our games booth, I think that we'll add this over here and we may even add a couple of these. And then the other restrooms are gonna be way down here. So I don't wanna worry about those right now. And then for our rides, I think we will create a separate location for this. And we'll have some of our rides over here. And then I wanna see if we have the entertainment that we need. We have plenty of entertainment. So the other thing I really wanna add in this area are some custom assets that I think are gonna really fit well in this place. So we're gonna be using a number of these festival assets from the Little Italy collection by Gilded Age, which I think all really fit in well at a county fair. So this'll be the area where you could get different food options and we'll have them all within close proximity of one another. So I'm going to grab these and place them kind of like this up and down here. And then I'm gonna use some of these university tables from the campus DLC and we'll have seating areas mixed in here as well. And now at this point, you might be thinking this is all good and well, you've got a Red Bull umbrella, wonderful, that's great, this doesn't work. We've got a solution for that. We have park people generators. So what I will do is just grab these and there's a variety of different sizes that we could use. I'm gonna use the big one and spin it towards this path. And if we wanted to go the extra mile, these buildings are actually props. We could certainly make them commercial buildings, but I'm not really all that concerned. Now for all of these assets, we're gonna bob out those decals and it's amusement park tiles one. They do not fit this build at all. So I think we have to remove them and for all of the assets, every last one of them. 
And to me, this is already looking a ton better, but there's one more step that we could take this. And I think I want to paint in some gravel surfaces. Now there's gonna be two layers to this. The first is gonna be this real basic layer where we're just kind of blobbing in some of this gravel and trying not to encroach too much upon the paved surface, if at all possible. And you know what? It's time to be flexible. We will encroach right upon those surfaces. Now, I think this is really important because of what we are about to do. I want to use a decal on this, and this should end up looking really good if I go individual. Look at that. That looks super detailed. Now, we've got a small one and a large one. This is from Ronnie X69. So if you are looking for this one, this is what it is. And as we add this on top, you can see that it blends it quite a bit more because gravel's messy. And there we go. I think that's looking pretty darn good and it makes it look very rural. Now, the whole reason I wanted to make sure that we have the gravel underneath it is as we zoom out, you see that we get that normal vanilla gravel look and it just doesn't look great. But reasonably, I care what it looks like right here and it looks pretty good. The one thing to keep in mind with these assets or these, these decals rather is that the larger asset leaves more of that rocky texture than the smaller ones. So you're going to have to blend them if you want it to look good. But okay, now that we've got that complete, let's see how far we are away from leveling up. Well, we've got no visitors, so that's not helping. So what we're gonna do is lower this way, way down. We're gonna advertise this. We're gonna make it the main park. We're gonna celebrate. We're gonna have night tours and even more fun, and we'll recycle our garbage. And I'm sure half of those policies aren't applicable to this park, but we're gonna do it anyway. And then the other thing I wanna make sure of is that we actually have water pipes going underneath these roads right where they belong. And you know, honestly, I think I know what the problem is here. We're still not seeing visitors. And you know what? It works poorly because they're not actually walking through the gate. They're walking through the gate, but not through it, if that makes any sense. So they're using this path right here. So we will have to sever this. Then we'll place this right here. And then honestly, I'm guessing that I can pull this to right here and it will still work then. This is probably good enough. Yeah, and you can see that that person just walked through. So now that they've walked through, that should count as an entry into the park and give us what we need to be able to level up. And indeed, we have our first visitor. So I'm gonna let this go until we reach level two. And here we go, we've reached level two and we've unlocked the rotating teacups and the piggy train. And honestly, these seem like the perfect assets for a fair. So let's get these placed right away. Now, one of the reasons why I wanted to wait to move on to the next part of the build is because I am concerned about where to begin the next part of the build. I wanna make sure that we have enough space for all the rides that make sense. So we are going to wait to level this area up before we build other things, or at least we'll let this level up for a while before we start building other things. And we will keep things fairly close to one another. We don't need to spread them out. It is a county fair after all. And then just like before, we will go through and bob out those decals out of existence. And there we go. Two more rides in the books. I think it's looking pretty good. Now, we've got to make sure that we've got enough entertainment to reach the next level. And we have plenty. So I feel like we need a beer tent. <laughs> Maybe that's the Wisconsinite in me coming up. But I, I, that's just something I expect to see. Now, I'm starting to open tabs so I can have things separate and go back and forth between them. And now when I want to get to my amusement park assets, it's right there. I want to get back to my gravel decals, it's right there. And right here, I'll look for a tent. And we've got this big event tent. And to me, this seems like the perfect kind of asset for this. And then once again, more gravel looking really good. Now, I am curious if we look at the other assets, we can see that we've only got a couple left. I don't know that we're going to place the roller coaster, but I absolutely want the drop tower ride, the pendulum ride, the swinging boat, and maybe even the log ride. We will see. I think the log ride and the house of horrors are probably a little bit too far. Now, all of that said, it'll probably fit right about here. So let's just let this go for another couple minutes and we'll level up to the next level.
All right, we've reached level three. We get the swinging boat, the house of horrors, and the bumper cars. I'm not sure that we really want any of these outside of maybe the bumper cars. So let's go ahead and get these placed. And I think that we'll place them right about here. And I think the main things that we still want to place are the Ferris wheel, the drop tower ride, and the pendulum ride. So that's level four and level five. And while we wait to reach level five, why don't we move on to building some of our agricultural buildings? Now our agricultural buildings are one of the main reasons why we have this access road back here because there's going to be a lot of freight traffic going to these buildings. So I want to give enough space that we have some separation in between our fairgrounds and these buildings, but not so much as to prevent walking in between the two. So let's begin by grabbing that pedestrian road right here. And where this straightens out or starts to, I'm going to send this right back through here. And then rather than directly connecting this, I'm just pulling this node nice and tight so it looks good. And we're using this road so that we can place some normal buildings right on this road. Now I'm going to try to play around with this to move the access so that we're not placing any access directly on this road so we won't have any freight traffic here. But to begin, I'm going to place a couple of barns. And now I'm going to create an industrial area. And that might sound strange, but I want to actually have some livestock through here. And that's the only way that we're going to be able to do it. So that means that we're overlapping districts, which you can't do. So I will carve out a little segment right here. And we'll make this the Clearwater County 4-H Fair. Now to get this to work, we need to have a main building because this is an industrial area. Thankfully, we have this farm main building block. So I should be able to grab this and I want to place it inside of this barn so that we don't have to have the actual building. And then right here, let's go ahead and have a small animal pasture. And then to get this to work, we're going to also need a small grain silo. And then I want an actual barn. And truthfully, I'm not very satisfied with that barn. Let's see if we have a better one. And though this one's a prop, I'm going to go with it anyway. I just think it looks nicer. For the animal pasture, I'm going to switch this over to pigs. And then I'm going to change the spawn point. So I can just pull this over here. And I'm going to pull this really close to the barn. And then we'll spin it right there. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing with this. That one's fine. Let's get some power here. And we have two options. We could use 81 tiles and city skylines to this, or we could run a rural line. And I think for the time being, we won't give up on city skylines one functionality just yet. And there we go. Now we have power here. And now while we wait for this to fill in, what we're going to do is make a special gazebo building. Control C. We're going to clone this thing a couple of times and then I'll grab these two, do the exact same thing. And then I'm going to hold down control and rotate this thing around. Actually controls the wrong one. I want to hold down alt. And then I'm going to grab these middle ones with move it and just drop them a little bit. You can see that the at the at the tips of the roof, it's poking through just a little bit. And then I can do something like that and it feels like a cohesive building one complete structure. I really, really like that. And now the last thing we need to do to make this feel like a cohesive building is to get the color right. So we have recolor in here. So I'll grab this, copy this, and then we'll just paste it to each of these. That's looking really, really good. It is a little bit too close to the road in my opinion though. And it seems like these buildings are backwards. So I am going to grab these ones, alt them around. And then I'm gonna select all of them and pull them all back. That's looking pretty darn good. What we are going to do next is make sure that all of these have access. So I am going to grab this road and send it right behind. And now we're gonna try something. I wanna see if we can redo the placement of all of our building spawn points to get this to be functional.
Okay, and before I could move all those spawn points, I had to find the perfect location for the building. All of the different barns had to be close enough to a building to be happy, but I think we're now there. So now I will finally adjust all of these spawn points. And there we go. We're seeing lots and lots of traffic as all of these buildings fill up. But as I click around, I just want to see if these are all functional or not. It's going to be difficult to be able to tell right off the bat, but it seems like some of them are and none of them are complaining. And truthfully, that's probably going to be good enough for me. And then behind this building, I want to have a place where people could hang out. So let's throw a gazebo back here. And look at that. This is upset that it's not in a park area. So what I think we'll do here is just play with our district just a little bit and try to sneak this inside. And there we go. It is perfectly content right now. And if it's happy, I'm happy too. <laughs> and now for this area, I think that we will once again add in gravel and key locations. And there we go. I think that's looking pretty darn good. But there's one really important key building that I want to place. So I want this center piece right here. And then we're going to back this out. And then I'm going to steal these pieces once again. And then I got to be really careful with these because I want to make sure that things line up really nicely. So we'll do one right there. And then we'll hold down Alt for these other wings. Okay, so this is more or less the design of the building, but I want to modify this just slightly to make sure that everything is in where it needs to be. And that looks really good. We've just got to figure out how we're going to make this fit in place. It's also maybe a little bit wider than I'd like it to be. So I might slide some of these buildings in to be nice and tight. There we go. That's looking pretty good. So what we'll try to do now is find a home for this where we can have vehicular access all the way around. So I think we'll do something like that. And then I'm going to work this pedestrian road all the way around. So, OK, we have access to the back side of the building in a number of locations. Now, for the rest of this, we've got to try to make this work. And I'm going to be honest, I can't believe that that worked. <laughs> so I just spun them all around and now they all have roadway access. And I'm happy that 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 was a simple solution to what seemed to be a complex issue. So I'm going to fix some of the things that I broke attempting to fix this. And now we need to get the color to be the same. And I think for this one, I'm going to go for a white building. And the thing that I'm thinking is it might be nice to be able to go through this little complex and have the different color buildings be what indicates where you're supposed to go. There we go. That is looking pretty good. That said, this is our main entry point. It's doing some weird things here. At least we our road is doing some weird things. So let's make this curve a little bit nicer. And there we go. That is looking considerably better. Let's once again work on our spawn points. All right, I've adjusted all the spawn points and now they're all located behind the building. And we see that some of these things are filling up. Some of them appear to at least be working and I am pleased. I'm just double checking all of these. Look at this. They're all filling up even though I've moved their spawn points a long ways away. So that is looking outstanding. And then the last thing I want to do around here is add a bit of gravel once again. And there we go. Things are starting to really look good around here. And I think for our agricultural area, we've got everything that we need. And I'm really pleased with the way that this has turned out. Now, the interesting thing is our fairgrounds has not leveled up in this entire time. We're getting closer, but I think that we're going to have to hold off and wait until we're done with our music venue. So for our concert area, we're going to focus mainly on the concerts DLC, which probably isn't a huge surprise. So let's place those assets down and then we'll customize the area so that it's a little bit more interesting than it might otherwise be. So I'm going to place this right about here. I want to give some space 
because I want to have the fan zone over here. And then back here, I want to add some bleachers. Now, one of the things is we're currently focused on the wrong road. So I'm going to use move it to rotate these around. And then we'll have to use some of our pedestrian pads right here to get things lined up appropriately. And now before we go any further, I want to add in some bleachers and we already have some modular bleachers from Crystal Listo. I want to use the home bleachers right back here. And then we also have the visitor bleachers and I'm going to spin these around so that we can basically create a little bit of a pavilion right here. And that looks totally off. <laughs> And I guess sometimes you've got to eyeball it. This looks pretty good to me. But I think that that might be perfect right there. So now we're going to have to move this path back. You can see that there's it's, it all feels a bit cramped right here. So what we're going to do is grab all of these nodes right here along with these buildings. And I just want to pull them back a little ways. And there we go. I've added restrooms to both sides so you wouldn't have to walk quite as far. And this whole place is laid out in a way that I think would be fairly logical. There are lights through here that we are going to remove. I'm not overly concerned about those just yet. So one of the things that I, I guess is a complaint of mine about the concert asset is that it just kind of looks weird. <laughs> so we've got some concessions, these trees in the middle of it. So I'm going to see what we can bob out of here. And honestly, I'm fairly pleased with this. I was really hoping that I could get rid of these things right here, but it's just not in the cards for us. So we'll have to live with a bit of imperfection. Now I'm going to remove some of the pavement through here. And it's interesting. There's a bunch of lights through here. And again, I can't do anything about those. This asset kind of just is what it is. However, I think we can do something like this. And in my opinion, that's already a fairly dramatic improvement. And now let's add some of our gravel to this area, make it look a little bit nicer. Now, I wasn't going to do this just yet, but I'm, I'm really kind of getting impatient with all the trees that I'm seeing. So I think that for one spot on this map, I'm going to remove them. And honestly, maybe I'll just get rid of all of them and we'll add them back in after the fact. There, much, much, much better. Now, this to me feels really good already. We'll have to add something here to fill this area in a little bit. But the other thing I'm a little concerned about is that there's nothing happening back here. So once more, let's add some of those park people generators. And then I just added another one of those paths right behind there. I think that that is looking really, really good. And now we need to do a little bit of configuration to this because this is a functional concert venue, which is the main reason I wanted to go for this. And if I recall correctly, the more expensive each of the tickets is, the more desirable this is. So we're going to go for it. We'll advertise it. We're going to have a premium studio and we'll also increase the security budget as well. And hopefully that gets people interested in what we're doing right here. I also need to take a look at our building spawn points because right now it's pointing to the festival area itself rather than behind it. And that means that garbage cannot be collected. So I'm hoping that it will let me get away with one right here. And then I'll need to do the exact same thing with our restrooms. Very good. So let's let this run for a couple of minutes. And interestingly, I just saw the garbage get picked up at our festival area and we now have unlocked level four for our fairground generally. So we're going to place a couple of assets here while feeling thankful that things appear to be working well over here. So we now have the drop tower ride, which I think is one of those rides that's really important to see at a fairgrounds anyway. I mean, this is a little big. <laughs> it, it should probably be half this height, but we're going to roll with it anyway because it's what we have available to us. And then the pendulum ride is another one that I feel is very prominent. It's one of those that you might see on the freeway and go, oh my goodness, i got to check this place out. Now there is this log ride and I feel conflicted. Much like the swinging boat, it feels like something that you would see more at an actual amusement park 
than at a place like this. Same thing with the roller coaster. It all feels like it's a little bit much for a county fairground, so we might skip those. But I just wanted to make sure we had enough entertainment. And look at that, we are right on the cusp. So I'm going to get this place decked out with a path. And then I'm gonna loop some of this back around and you might be wondering what we're doing with all of this land right here. And honestly, I think we're probably gonna have a parking facility and another entryway in right here. I wanna use this parking that is over in Shorewood that I continually steal. So this one right here, I think is gonna be perfect. In fact, we'll just take it like that and copy this over. And the reason why I wanna use these is I should be able to make these gravel. And honestly, now that I think about it, I'm not going to do that to these because if I were to do that here, I would want to remove the parking lines. And if I remove the parking lines, I'll remove it from all of them. There we go. And you might wonder why so much parking. And the main reason is this would be a regional amenity. There would be people coming far and wide to get to the fair. And I think that because of that, you'd expect to see a whole bunch of parking here for better or for worse. And there we go. I just wanted to improve the connections between some of these different areas. And now I want to decorate underneath these and remove some of the props using Bob. And there we go. And look at all these people streaming through here. This is wild. It feels so active and lively. I absolutely adore it. This is so nice. And coming back to our music venue, we are starting to see people here as well, which I'm really excited about. It's starting to come together. And now with our music venue in place, let's move on to building our campground. Now, finally, we'll build our campground, which will be fairly minimal. I don't want this to be overwhelming or dominate this fairgrounds. I just want it to be a nice place that people could visit either in the off season or camp during the fair if they wanted to be able to walk to all of the things that the fair offers. So we are going to just place one road right here and then have a loop around this road. And then we'll have some trails coming off from here. We'll have an entryway into the fairground itself. And I've also noticed that we are having a problem with garbage here. So I think I'll also add an access road back here as well. And now that we've got this with a road in the back, let's go ahead and change the location of our building spawn point. We'll put that in the rear and spin it around. Now from this little circle right here, I think that we're gonna have a restroom facility and a couple of dirt pads coming off. So I'm gonna turn off all the snap twos and we'll draw our access right into the fairgrounds. I'm gonna turn this down though. And we'll do something like that. I also want to extend our gravel over. It looks a little bit strange. And now we'll finish up our other pads. And I don't want to just have all of our tent camping coming off from here. And then before we add some amenities, once again, I'm gonna add some parking. I'm gonna add a couple of lots right on the side of the road. And now we'll start adding some amenities. So the main things are gonna be restrooms and things of that nature in the center. Maybe even a pavilion, maybe that's where I wanna start. And then next to these pavilions, and this is a custom asset that we've had in the build for a while that we've used before, but I'm gonna add in some picnic tables. And then we'll add some grills as well. And this is another workshop prop, but you know what? I'm just, I'm having a good time with it. <laughs> We're gonna roll with it. And then I also wanna add a lookout tower so that someone could reasonably take a look at the fairgrounds from this area. I think it'd be a really neat amenity. So we'll add one of those right here. And now I just wanna add a ton of campsites through here. So I wanna first see if we can add some of these tent camping sites because these would be kind of one of the easier ways to fill this in and it's kind of the look and vibe I'm going for. And these look pretty good, but I think we can do even better. So we're gonna add a couple of the larger tents 
and maybe we'll place these a little bit closer to the festival grounds. And I think I'm going to really pack these in. If you've ever been at one of these music festivals or something of that nature, people are just tent to tent. <laughs> so I remember going to Bonnaroo a million years ago and that's the way it was. The tents were basically touching. <laughs> so we'll go with a little bit of that right here. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. And I think I might get rid of some of these other roads that we kind of arbitrarily added in here. Stuff that's not really serving a purpose. And there we go. I think we may also try to add in a boulder site, maybe right in the center. This shouldn't fit here, but let's see if we can make it. And there we go. And now there's just one more thing I want to do with this. And that is I want to go through Bob and there's a whole bunch of these old assets through here. And I think we'll just get rid of all of them. So all of the different old trees gone, all the old bushes gone. We'll do the exact same thing with our boulder site as well. And then I added some gravel underneath these campsites. I'm going to do the exact same thing here. At least where I am, there's generally gravel underneath the sites. And I think the main reason for that is fires. And there we go. This place clearly needs more landscaping, but I think it's well on its way. And next, I want to move on to adding a few general park amenities. For our general park amenities, we're really looking at a couple of things. I think we want some tennis courts and basketball courts and maybe even a community pool over here. So I'm going to fill in this area with that. And then I also want to add a park maintenance facility. Now, I did extend the duplex area out a bit more, but I think we're going to eat into this area just a little bit for that facility because it's very large. So let's begin with our tennis courts. And I think we'll go with our tennis courts triple and we can place one right here and one right next to that. Although I am curious. Oh, actually, this one might work better for us. It's our large tennis <laughs> park. <laughs> I'm going to continue to just plop a whole bunch of these. So I'm hoping there's this path looking thing down the middle. I'm going to place that right about here and I'm going to remain hopeful that I can just run a path down there. And then we'll also add some basketball courts. And these are just the normal vanilla basketball courts that come with the game. I did have to move this a little bit closer to the road to make it happy, but I think it's OK now. Now, I mentioned the community pool. Let's add that. And for this one, we'll just Add that right about here. And interestingly, this is only happy because of this pedestrian road. So I'm going to set the spawn points on here because I know that we're not going to have garbage collected. And I'm just going to move that right here to the road. And then I'm going to look at these as well because you can see it's the exact same problem. Basketball courts are not going to be able to pick up trash. And now we have all of the trash getting picked up right there. And for the tennis court, I thought we were going to be OK, but even that one's in the wrong spot. So never a bad idea to take a look. And the last thing I want to put over here is a skate park. And then we'll get that spawn point moved as well. And I think with all of these amenities in such a close proximity, we've really cemented this place as one of the most important parks in the entire county. Now, the last thing I want to add over here again is the park maintenance facility. And, you know, hindsight's 2020. I think if I were to redo this, I might look at this building and try to place it closer to our fair area because it kind of looks like a barn, but that's not what we've done. So we're just going to live with a little bit of imperfection. I'm going to place that right here. And there is a power line running right in front of this. I don't really mind that. I just want to make sure that the power line is not in the middle of the pavement. And there we go. That should do the trick for us. And then the last, last thing I want to do is add some sort of a pedestrian path along here. Most of the year, this place would be empty right here. There'd be nothing going on. We'll have some landscaping and things of that nature. It would be a place where you might have certain festivals, maybe a farmer's market, things like that. But it would be nice to have a nice walking path along the water right here. I could see that being a nice amenity year round, even when it's cold out, truthfully.
I decided to add a couple of gazebos, a climbing frame, and some tables over here to play chess, and I think that really helps out. In fact, with the climbing frame, now that I see it, I may even add one over here. So the interesting thing is that means that we've added basically all of the different park amenities in here. The only one that we haven't added from uh, the only pack that we haven't used as part of the Park Life DLC is the zoo, but we haven't unlocked that yet, interestingly enough, which is one of the reasons why we haven't done it. All that said, I want this to get to level five. So we're gonna give this a couple of minutes to level up. And finally, we have a level five amusement park. So there are a couple of reasons why I cared so much about this. The first is the Ferris wheel. I really want the Ferris wheel. I feel like it's not a fairgrounds without a Ferris wheel. But the other thing is I want to get rid of Chirperland. So we have a way to do this and we'll do, take care of that in just a moment. But first let's place this. And I think we'll go right about here. And now that we have that in place, we are going to attempt to remove the Chirperland gate and we have invisible park gates. So we're actually going to convert this into a normal city park. Whoa. <laughs> seemed like there were people flying so we'll add this right here and then we're gonna have to convert this entire thing over which means that I will have to rename the park unfortunately it also means that it will no longer be a level 5 park but I'm not overly concerned about that and now that we have this new park in place let's rename it and I'm going to add additional side entrances and this is really so that we can keep track of how many people are coming in here and I want to clean this up as well, but we'll do that at the end. And with those couple of entryways, there should be a complete block of access outside of going through those, which should be really helpful in helping us have our numbers make sense. So this one seems like it's having issues though. So let's give this one more look over and then we'll unlock this and upgrade this to be a normal pedestrian facility. And I had to play with this a little bit, our main entry point. The problem is it seemed like this entry was a little bit too close to this node with the bus stop. So as a result, all the pedestrians were skipping it. So I've gone ahead and made that adjustment, scooted this over just a little bit and now it's working just fine. And then the last thing I want to do is pop through here, advertise this park, make it the main park, celebrate at night, have night tours, have even more fun. And then I want to really lower the price in here. That's not the goal to make a ton of money. So we'll drop this way, way down. I think we had it at one before. I think we'll drop it down to like two bucks or something like that. Really, the goal is actually let's make it free. The goal is to make money inside of here. Uh, selling tickets or something of that nature like you'd see at a fairground not necessarily make a ton of money on the way in and now with our county fairgrounds feature complete let's move on to a little bit of landscaping and detailing for our landscaping and detailing there are really three focus areas i want to fence in certain parts of this i want to add a bunch of trees and then i want to really zero in on the lighting to make sure that we don't have lights where they don't make sense so let's begin with our fencing and i think we'll use our city park fence all the way around here And it looks like we had an unfortunate incident right here. So uh, I guess we'll, res we'll restore this as well. I didn't see that. You didn't see that. It's always been fine. We didn't have a fire. We're perfect. <laughs> so for the rest of this, let's go ahead and add some landscaping. And what I'm thinking we're going to do is basically remove all of it through here and then add our own. So I'm going to select trees only through here, and then we'll just get rid of all of them. Now that's not the height of realism, but I want to try something through here. The first thing I want to do is get rid of some of the trees on assets like this. And it was just really easy to see those now. That one I'm less concerned about. And I think for the most of these, we're probably okay for the most part. And what we're going to do is go up and down here. I want to really deliberately place them on the inside of the park and through the fairgrounds itself. And then as we get to the outside, we're going to have a really dense row of landscaping 
so dense that it'll probably be the densest thing we have throughout here. But for the rest of it, we'll just have some small trees like this. And now we are going to add a dense row of landscaping around the outside, but I noticed that this gate right here is a problem. And again, that is because of our spawn points. Let's see if we can fix this. That should do the trick for us. Okay, so for the outside landscaping, we're gonna use move it, have just trees selected, and I'm gonna grab what I think is a good illustrative segment of landscaping. And I wanna make sure that we don't have any anarchies on because I don't wanna overlap things accidentally where we do overlap, I'm going to do so deliberately. There we go. I think that looks really good. It looks like this was kind of carved into the forest, which I like. And I really enjoyed putting this together over here, making it feel like it's really densely forested. I think it would give a little bit of separation from all of the noise and activity that would be happening over here during the summer uh, fair season. Now, the last thing we need to do is figure out the lighting situation through here. And for this, we basically have to look at all of these pedestrian roads and adjust them all. So. What we're going to do is select this. I probably should have done this before I placed them, but I want to upgrade just this. We're not using Bob because I don't want to mess with the rest of them, but we're going to upgrade all of these to no longer have lights. Now, the easiest way for me to figure out what actually has lights and not will be for me to actually change the time of day. So we'll make it nighttime and then I'll just remove all of these. I'm also going to turn anarchy on so I don't break a bunch of stuff. Or I'll try not to anyway. It looks like I did anyway. So we'll just need to keep an eye out for that. And now you can see that there are basically no lights anywhere to be found throughout the park. That also wasn't what I was going for. But at least now we have a completely blank slate to place our own lights manually, which I'm really looking forward to doing. I am very pleased with how this has turned out. Basically, I wanted to make sure that the main path all the way through here was really well lit. And then on some of the side paths or the paths that are more for recreation and just checking things out, I went with some of these French street lights that are much more small and ornate and whoop, <laughs> are gonna blink a whole bunch if I get too close. But generally, I think they look a lot more decorative. So if you're on one of these little walking pads, that's what I wanted you to see. And then as we made our way over to the stadium area, I added a whole bunch of lights, thinking that these would be turned off during a concert, but during normal operations, we'd have those on so that you could see what's happening through here. And then as you get into the camping area, very minimal lighting. I did add some decorative green lights through here to illuminate the rocks. This is a kind of a signature feature of this park, but generally try to keep it as minimal as possible and in as logical places as possible. Now, the one thing I am interested in is if we were to come through here, besides all the blinking, it's not too bad. It's not too terribly obstructive to the neighborhood, any more obstructive than you'd expect it to be. And during the actual fair, it's just going to be bright and loud. That's just kind of the way it's going to be. But generally, I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. And I think there's only one more thing left to do. Take inventory of what we've done with a brief city tour.
And you know, this build was a little bit unusual, probably not what you expected to see me return to Clearwater County with, but I think it really highlights the type of special things that you're able to do in City Skylines 1 with all of the content that's been produced for it over the last almost 10 years at this point. So it was really fun for me to come back and put together something like this that I just couldn't do right now in City Skylines 2. And I really hope that you've enjoyed it. If you did, please consider hitting the like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I want to thank you so much for your time today. There's a million things that you could have been doing. You decided to hang out with me and play a little bit of City Skylines, and I appreciate that, and I appreciate you. I really want to know how you feel about this build. So if there are things that I could have improved, let me know down in the comments. And if you liked it, let me know that as well. Thank you so much, and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Take care, and bye-bye.